appreciate in the in the rebuilding of our district and particularly these two buildings is I've held a number of community meetings in this common space here and when people come in first of all they aren't expecting this this isn't what they would think in an elementary school it's big people space too and with just a couple shifts of, of walls and things suddenly it's uh, it's a place where we can have adult discourse so I like the way that the, the space can be transformed depending on the audience and yet there's nothing more thrilling than coming in here in the morning when they're doing an all school assembly. The young kids are down below and all the older kids are up and around and you have that whole, community, the whole school community um, participating as a, as, a, as a group. We wanted a place that invited people to come in that, that was warm, it was colorful, but had space where they could breathe. Um, and just by virtue of the, the type of activities and the way we organize the space, it would draw people together in groups. And that's really what we've seen. It's been, it's been really exciting to watch. Yeah, it's great looking just out the window here yeah. to see uh, this morning everybody coming in and, and congregating, which, which really, I think, doesn't often happen in schools to get into the corridors and they dispense and they're not one of, part of one community. Well, that's, that's the human part of it. I, I think uh, just adults and kids usually like to connect with each other before they get to work. And um, in the past, kids had to wait outside in the cold because there wasn't a place for them to be. And so um, they come in now, they get kind of warmed up, chat with their friends, and then it's time to go to class. And then they move to these little sub-communities within the building, a uh, place where the teachers are in, vision, are in line sight of each other. Uh, this building before was a series of boxes. Teachers were really isolated in what they did. The excellent things they did were sort of unwitnessed um, and when things were going hard, they felt kind of isolated and unprotected. So um, this I like is because it breaks up a nice elementary school into small learning communities, shared resources, and, um, and it's just like, it's kind of like your home, but you're learning. We're finding now as the economy has worsened that communities either need to rally around their schools or their schools are not going to thrive. And what we have here in this opportunity because of a great space for adults to come and help is um, people wanting to come here. It's, it's a warm, comfortable place to be. We are a retirement community too, and we have this tremendous asset out there that we would like to um, bring alongside our kids. So it, it's uh, the best of conditions in really hard times. Well, my experience as superintendent has, is a look over the last six years, but I started as a teacher 25 years ago in this district. So what I am so pleased for our community is that by investing in facilities that work better for learning, we actually are improving student learning um, even in tight budget times. Um, we're going to see compression on our budget, fewer people available to serve kids, but when you have them in pods or modules, um, there's that shared space where aid, instructional aides, volunteers can come in and work with small groups of children or individuals, but not necessarily intrude on the, the general learning activities in the classroom. So I think that alone is going to help us get through the next few rough years. Additionally, we're finding we don't have to have as much technology, computers and things like that, because there's a shared space. So what I know, and this is the boring stuff, that the cost of replacing computers and things like that will not be nearly as great because I won't have to replace as many. That actually probably means I can replace things more frequently and have them current and up to date. The name of the game in 21st century education, you need to be able to adjust what you're doing to your resources and the kids you have, and um, it's been a great facility for us. I, I was, of course, in the old Jackson and old Roosevelt schools quite a bit. And the difference in feeling tone in the schools is amazing to me. When I go into Jackson School, it's, it's so calm. And, and not necessarily quiet, but it's calm. And it's a learning environment, and the kids are respectful. One of the real strengths of the design is the, the cluster of classrooms around the common learning area where uh, teachers can pull their kids together, uh, they can, can collaborate with each other, they can uh, mix kids in different arrangements, whether it be by uh, ability or by interest. They can, um, uh, they're really connected to each other, visually and physically, with that connecting space. Uh, and, and they remember, I think it reminds them day in and day out, that they are part of a team and that they do have colleagues right there versus next door where they can't see what's going on or where it takes a little more effort and they have to leave their kids unattended to go talk to the other teacher. Jackson's unique in that we have multi-layered um, reading programs and because we, we're very good at identifying the 
specific, the specific needs of the children, we have a number of groups. So, and each group is targeted towards a select number of kids and their, their reading level. Within the classroom, it's kind of difficult. It, it's not kind of, it is very difficult to do a number of groups. With this commons area, we can have four different groups taking place. I can have a group in my classroom, and then we can have groups taking place in the commons area. So from that standpoint, it's nice. And going back to the windows, I can go ahead and look out the window, and I can see how it's going. And if there's something that needs to be addressed, I can excuse myself from the classroom, walk out, and address it. So in that respect, it's given second and third grade, there's that sense of family where the, all the classrooms are together. A child's ability to be able to be trusted and move within their educational facility is very empowering. And uh, we, we try to help our children to develop a sense of responsibility and respect. And in, do, in so doing, giving that child the opportunity to know that um, that they may work in a common learning area uh, within visual proximity of their teacher is an element of trust. And you will see children's confidence just grow immensely when they are given that opportunity. So this um, school gives many chances for a child to exhibit freedom in their educational choices, in movement, uh, in recreation, in leisure, and uh, we, we try to instill that respect that we have for them. Many of our children live in uh, multiple dwelling um, apartment houses and they um, don't have a lot of their own space. Some of our children um, live two families to a, a, a home and the the um, opportunity to have your own ottoman to sit on with no one else bothering you. <laughs> have your own little quiet spot um, without uh, many people looking over you is huge. So you can just see a child's physical being just relax. And um, they just, it's kind of a luxury for many of our children. What I really appreciated uh, working with our architects was they really wanted uh, input from employees and from parents. Uh, so I really felt like it, it wasn't like a building they had already designed, they were just going to plop down in our location. They really wanted to know how we were using the space, what kind of instruction we were using. And uh, parents also wanted to keep a sense of, you know, it looks like a school. So it felt like there's a lot of opportunity for input. And we ended up with some uh, kind of tentative, some concept designs, and those are really close to how it ended up. So it was really nice to see things match up from what we had talked about and what actually occurred. My family is a family of teachers. They've got 60 years of experience at least. And I've seen theories come and go. Uh, and I did not want spaces that were stuck in one type of instruction. So all of our uh, common spaces have flexible furniture. So we can move cushions around, we can move tables. That way, uh, if, group, if teachers aren't doing the same things we're doing 20 years from now, they'll be able to use the space differently to fit with their, their current practices. We appreciated so much being listened to. Um, education is uh, a beast in itself. And <laughs> unless you've lived it and experienced it, it's difficult to tell other people about um, what it's like with the limited resources and they continue to de you know to be more and more limited uh, we knew when we met with you originally that we were going to have to extend our resources the best that we could and having these open corridors and um, shared commons areas allows us to have one adult supervising several groups at one time who are working independently that was very important so when you listened to um, what we needed and designed our building um, around those needs, this is, it's working. I mean, it's, there is never a day in our school day that we don't have the resources that we need.